Hello, thanks for my name, part two of the hand tutorial. Um, in part one, we just drew the hand, uh, both sides, front and back. I uh, just duplicated it, put them inside folders and put them inside a switch layer, which will come into play later on. I'm gonna put that inside a bone layer. Um, now, the reason for this is because I wanna include the arm, but I don't want the arm to be switching in and out. So I'm going to put the arm behind the hand inside the hand well let's call it arm I suppose and so I'm going to start putting bones in here so here's one here's another one and I'm not too concerned about the precise placement of each one I'm holding alt to select the bone I want to be the parent of the next bone I draw if you forget to do that then you'll notice that the uh, parenting is off so you can just reparent it and the influence if I select all bones I'm going to reduce that a bit just so it's easier to see now in the olden days you'd get this sort of thing going on where the influence stretches and you'd have to separate things across different layers uh, I mean sorry you just spread them out far away from each other is one option or you wouldn't use flexi binding and you'll just take a shape and you'll assign it to a bone like hard assigned points to a bone not uh, I never use layer binding really but um, in this case what I'm going to do it's a very easy way of doing things I'm going to just select a bone and then I'm going to hit control shift and F which does use selected bones for flexi binding which is a new way of binding um, layers to bones so next one I'm going to do is so you'll see here things will start looking right as I do this so if I hold the palms both palms are selected I've got this bone selected press control F and you see that suddenly it's not actually being skewed by all the fingers um, so I'll do the same thing with a thumb tip with this bone the same with the thumb pads with this bone the index fingers with this bone the middle fingers with this bone here and this is actually quite a simple rig um, when it comes down to it and it's it, you'll see later it's really really versatile um, you can get a lot of nuanced movements I used to put two bones in a finger and have a knuckle but with smart bones you just don't need to do that anymore um, now this finger I don't want rotating like this all these fingers I'm going to now I'm using Ramon's uh, select bone tool which has got some smart bone creation stuff in it and I can s multiple select bones but you can do it with a normal bone tool just gonna add a constraint of like minus 15 because these fingers don't really go spreading much further than that and they don't need to so I've got this control over the fingers now as far as the controls over the thumbs um, you'll see that the rotation is actually not too bad but um, I've not t done too badly actually but what I would do to correct that if I needed to is I'd go down here and I'd actually change the bone and then I can put onion skinning on and then go back to frame zero why can't I see it? Oh. oh, yeah. Okay, so then if I go to the bone selection tool instead of Z, I can see the lines here. And now, visually, I can move the position of the bone and see how the actual thumb is changing position based on the th um, bone position. So just to correct, like rotational kind of problems now I want the hand the thumb not to move too far up the hand like it was before so I'll move it down here 
and it means that I'm going to have to correct these bones a little bit. But you can see I'm just correcting the actual, by moving the bones but looking at the shadow here, that's what I'm correcting. Now if I move back here, then their position is not too bad. Now, as far as how far it's going to um, bend, I probably want it to bend maybe that much on a maximum. So same thing again, I'll move it to that position and then here uh, with the bone selected I go to angle constraint. Let me just move this out of the way. And then I change this side until I reach the point where it's actually pushing the hand, the finger. So that's like the maximum that I need. And the minimum, let's do the same for the minimum. So you'll see now that that's the maximum I've just set. The minimum, I can actually probably extend that a bit further. So let's just, oh, I keep doing that. Let's see how that goes if I rotate it here. It's maybe a bit too much. So maybe like that's the maximum say. So what I'll do is I'll go back, do exactly the same thing. Oh, what's happened? I've put the constraint on the wrong thing. That's it. Okay, so I'm just going to bring that in until I see that finger start to move. And that's pretty much where I need it to be for that position. So now this hand, this finger, I'll do the same thing for the for the pad, so I don't want it to open much more than this. I'll go back to frame zero, add a angle constraint, and change this. And then that one, I'll leave it big for now, and then let's see how far that has to go. Maybe here is probably the maximum. So I'll go back here. same thing again okay so the angle constraints aren't too bad let's do the same thing with the with the rotation of the hand your hand probably doesn't rotate much more than that just put it out there go back to zero Say about the same. I'm not sure if I did that right, did I? No, I didn't. Oh, okay, let's say that's the maximum. So the rotation of the hand, I mean the actual hand, the way that the fingers, uh, this isn't too bad actually, but the way that they fit together will just change with smart bones, um, which let me just color these. So just for the purposes of uh, clarity, I'm just going to change the palm to the same as what I've colored it here. And what this does is it introduces new animation lanes which can be used later if required. So let me change that to blue, green, yellow, these two are purple. Okay, so now you see there's a lane for each finger and the thumb, so I can animate them individually and they won't get clogged up. You'll see that the purple, usually what would happen is that things would get clogged up here on the main timeline, but now with 9.5, I've got these separate controls here, which I can change for individual finger um, groups. So that's part two.
the basic rigging. Um, I'll go to part three and add some smart bone actions to each each of the bones that need them, and um, then we'll take it from there.